Now, I've always really loved having my assumptions and ideas about things um, challenged and questioned. I just, just always really enjoyed that, enjoyed um, seeing for myself where I've taken something to be one way and then somebody shows me that actually there's a completely different way of looking at it. And, um, and it, <laughs> even though I've really enjoyed that in my life, it was still took some getting used to to come to the Balanced View training and to have everything questioned. Mm -hmm. And to have this really amazing um, a approach to understanding the nature of mind, the nature of reality, the nature of identity. And I was given a really simple set of tools where I could explore that for myself. And not basing those ideas on those, those things on what other people had told me, but actually the, for the first time in my life being able to look clearly at my own experience and my own life and my own ideas and come to my own conclusions about that. <coughs> and um, the, the, the first um, instruction or suggestion that I was given was to um, just, just to stop thinking for a moment and, and recognize what remains when you stop thinking and there's an alertness, there's a clarity, there's a cognizance, there's an awareness, there's the capacity to know. And um, just that first introduction really made me smile because it was like, well, yeah, there it is. There, 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 that's, that's there. There's, there's an intelligence, there's an alertness that's just, it's there. And, it, it, and, and then I was given the next suggestion as well, in a short moment, um, of just allowing um, your experience just to be as it is, try recognizing that same intelligence again, just, just for a short moment and see what happens. And so um, I repeated that. I, I just paused with the incessant describing and thinking about everything and I gave myself a chance just to notice that same intelligence and alertness. And every time I did it, there it is. There's something that's just aware of everything that's going on. And, um, and the reason it made me laugh is because I, I, I tested this, this short moments repeated many times. And um, every time I, I stopped and checked, there was this intelligence, there was this openness. And what made me laugh was because it was, it was obvious to me by repeating this test that it had been there the whole time. And I had just been so caught up in focusing in on the descriptions of my experience that I just hadn't noticed what was actually the basis of all of my experience. And um, this was just, I mean, I just love this. I, it was just fantastic for me to discover for myself in my own experience, what was the basis of my, my experience? What was it about me that made me me? Like, what was it about me that never changed? What was it about me that was the constant throughout all of my experience? Because everything else was changing. You know, my experience is continually changing. My thoughts about myself are continually changing. You know, you think about the thoughts you've had about yourself, well, even today. You know, I think I'm great. I think I'm an idiot. I think I'm cool. I think I'm cold. I, you know, it's just, it's just all changing all of the time. And then I can look back over the years and I can, you know, my ideas about who I am from when I was 15 to the ideas that have happened all the way since and, you know, they're just changing all of the time. And so to discover that at the basis of all of these ideas and all of these ever-changing perceptions, what we can just call data, there was something that was constant. And with this practice of short moments, I was introducing myself to this complete openness, this stability of mind, this intelligence by which everything was known. And for me, that changed everything. Because what I saw was that when I began to recognize the basis of my experience, in the midst of my experience, then that gave me a different perspective on everything that was happening. So, for example, um, ah, that's a good one. Despair about the state of the world and concern for the future of our children or grandchildren and, 
and that for me was something that um, that was definitely a thought or a feeling that I was really familiar with and, and I looked at the media and it just it just seems so desperate you know that you turn on the media and there's so much going wrong with the, the climate and the planet and don't mention politics and and the, the violence and the you know just, uh, it's just like what, what can I do what what you know I how can I deal with all of this and um, I didn't see any way that I could and so I basically retreated into a, a, an increasingly small space in which I could live from and at least try and find some kind of personal um, sense of ease which I kind of succeeded at in a way, but it never really felt satisfying, even when my life was going really well. I always felt like there was just something missing. And so then to apply this same practice and approach to the thought of um, hopelessness or despair, or it was amazing to see firstly, well, what's the basis? How is it that I know that feeling of hopelessness or despair? It's through the same open intelligence. The basis of that thought or that feeling is the same intelligence that knows everything. It's the same intelligence that knows feeling really happy or experiences feeling happy or joy. And so that gave me the first insight into the mechanism that I'd used to deal with that thought of hopelessness or um, despair. And what I'd been doing was when it came up, I would start to think about it. Oh, that's the first mistake because it was like going down into this spiralling well of ever-increasing desperation and despair and the more I thought about it the more desperate it became and the more hopeless and helpless I felt about the situation and so to take a short moment of just stopping that description and recognising directly in the encounter with that feeling of hopelessness or helplessness or despair that it is the shining forth of open intelligence, that thought, that experience. And it is in that thought and in that experience that I will find open intelligence and nowhere else. And so in recognising the inseparability of that thought or that feeling, there's an immediate empowerment. Because I see I have a choice. I can continue on in that spiral of downward desperation, which I was so used to exploring, and seeing where that led, which was just basically nowhere, just a retreating from reality, a retreating from the world. Or, by allowing it to be as it was, I saw I had a choice. If I recognised it as open intelligence, then it was my motivation to do something about it. And what could I do about it? I can't take responsibility for the way that other people behave or act in the world and the things that other people do or say, but I can take responsibility for the way that I act and behave and relate. I can give up the victim, I give up the right to be a victim to any of these passing data streams, including helplessness, hopelessness and despair. I can become an example of what it means to live as open intelligence. And through my example, I can inspire other people to see that they can do exactly the same. And if you think back to your childhood, and I can think back to my childhood and think back to school, and I can think back to the one or two teachers that inspired me greatly and those were the ones, those are the teachers that I remember not all of the others that really didn't have that impact so you think about the impact that the one or two people you knew when you were younger that inspired you greatly have had on your life and you see that one person making this choice to live as completely open-hearted intelligence can have a huge effect on anybody that they meet without saying anything. So what you do about it with your children and your grandchildren and the future of our society is you become the example. You live as the change that you want to see. Giving up the right to be a victim to any data stream. Living a life of complete empowerment. And um, if you're somebody that is um, cynical or um, sceptical, then that's fantastic. That's great. And um, however cynical or... So <laughs> you weren't as cynical as I was, I can tell you. No way! 
<laughs> no way. I was so cynical and so skeptical. And um, I came to open my first open meeting here and I sat way at the back. So I didn't want to sit with everyone because I didn't, you know, what's this? But there was something I heard in these meetings. There was something that, that despite everything that was going on for me, all of my thinking about what I liked and didn't like, there was something that um, touched me. There was some description, something that was mentioned about the nature of reality being completely wide open like a clear sky. There was something about the recognition of all thoughts and emotions appearing like a rainbow within space that resonated with me at such a fundamental level that I wanted to know more. And given this tool of short moments, I could test myself and see what happened when I recognized and relied on this open intelligence. And the results were incredible. And they were very, very quick. It wasn't something that I needed to practice for years and years to see any of the results. So regardless of what I was thinking or feeling, I wanted to know more because I saw these results in my life. I began to see I could give up this total victimhood, this story of victimhood that I'd been running for years. And it was actually what I'd always wanted. I didn't want to live as a victim. And yet I saw I was the one that was victimizing myself. And seeing that, what do I do about it? Where do I get the support? Where do I get the, the tools to deal with this? And this is what the Balanced View training provides. Totally comprehensive support for you to decide how you want to live your life. Are you going to live your life in the way that other people have told you that you should or you shouldn't? Or are you really going to empower the nature of your mind and your capacity to live a life of great benefit in the way that you would like to? So that's what's on offer here, and, um, and very slowly it's dawned on me that this is the lifestyle that I want to lead. And the commitment that I have is the commitment on an, a moment-by-moment -moment basis of deciding what am I going to do? Am I going to continue to run with the data streams? These stories about what's going on, what's going on for me, what's going on for other people, what's going on with the world, and be so caught up in these stories that I can't relate to myself, I can't relate to other people, and I withdraw from the world? Or am I going to rest naturally as open intelligence? That's the commitment, moment by moment. Very simple. Do I want to live a life of misery, or do I want to live a life of um, complete open-hearted relating and ease? It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I think I th that's something I can commit to because my ideas about commitment were terrifying but that moment to moment decision that was really empowering and something that I could that's what I wanted